when we're about to make a recording at King's, the boys will come over from the choir school, the choral scholars will assemble in the vestry. And this is when the magic really starts. Stephen Cleary comes in, the atmosphere changes into one of total concentration. And suddenly you notice the silence in King's College Chapel is, is itself a very special sound. So when I started planning this journey to Rome, initially it was inspired by the tricentenary of the cello. And the idea really was to take the instrument on a journey. And King's was an obvious choice because it's a place where I first began making music. This recording also coincides with an alumni series of recordings inviting choral scholars back who played a big part in the choir. I gather this is the first one of that series, so I really, feel really privileged to have been invited to do so. Something that we really focused on when we decided to launch the King's College label was the need to make every record that we produce have a purpose and need to exist. And when Guy approached us with this album focused on his cello, we, we knew immediately that this was the, the perfect thing to launch a series of recordings. So the Strad has actually focused on Tekla a couple of times in the past. We've also featured Guy a few times, but it's very rare that a player actually takes their instrument on a journey. So this is quite a unique story, and it's nice to be able to bring both the maker and the player together in this way. It's such a natural step for Kings to start producing own label recordings with graduates and alumni. And it's wonderful that Guy's project has been the instigator of this becoming more of a thing for the college. There aren't that many record labels now which spend the amount of time, the amount of money. These are boutique recordings, they're beautifully done. And I'm personally very excited about the idea, first of all, of listening to what Guy eventually puts out and then what other King's alumni do later on. When we're moving through, for example, t um, 18, 19, yeah. through this crescendo, if I lead a bit more, yeah, maybe? Fine, we can because obviously push, your, push forward your yeah. hairpins are starting yeah, from yeah. nothing, but I'm going yeah. somewhere. Yeah. So I emailed Olo Yelo just to say that we were looking forward to recording his piece. And we were talking about the pacing and timing, and um, he was encouraging us just to think of the flow and the atmosphere around the piece. And in fact, I was, I was reading uh, what he wrote at the, at the front of the score, which says, with serenity, I wanted to write a cappella music that has a symphonic, abundant feel. I love a warm, lush sound that can give a feeling of space and evocativeness, but still be intimate somehow. But mainly, all I wanted to do with this piece was to write something that came straight from my heart without any pretense or filters. Today, just hearing the music, how it seems to just flow, he must have been incredibly inspired when he wrote it. when the choir take off in that middle section and soar up high, it's just, uh, it just makes your hairs stand on end and, and the cello it just spins out this line um, at the beginning and at the end. It's got a wonderful shape to it and I hope we've captured it. <laughs> 